Hallelujah. Good afternoon, everyone. Are you happy in the house of God? Yes? Very good to see everyone. And we would like to welcome to our international service, which we have every week at 1.30 p.m. You know that. And anybody who come here for the very first time, can I see the hand for the very first time? Oh, welcome. Yeah, welcome. Give a clap. Thank you, Jesus. Well, this is the house. The house of worship, the house of praise. Jesus is worthy to be worshipped. Anyone who come to the presence of God, and you will be blessed. Tell your neighbor right now, you will be blessed today. Again, again. And I would like to thank God, and I would like to thank Pastor Jeff. Thank you so much for nurturing our young people, especially the international service, and Pastor also. Yeah, thank you so much for being with us and encouraging our young people. This is what I dreamed like many years ago. I saw the people, uh, you know, uh, they get encounter with Jesus, with weeping and revival is taking place. I would like to see among our people. Like many of you know that we went for a mission trip last, couple month, last month, last year in Thailand. This is very... Um, the very first time among the Korean refugees, the Korean people, which they long to have for a long time. Among the Thai people, yes. In Burmese, in Burma, yes. But what about along the border? Talking about the refugee camp border, it's very hard. People cannot go out from the camp, but they have the spirit of hunger in their heart. We saw many people, many young people like you, more than 100 from Burma. They had to come, uh, climb the mountain, like, many hours, maybe six or more than six hours, to come to the conference. And it was a great blessing for us to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ. And people started to feel the presence of God. Like in 2009, when we started the church, you know, in 2009, the Spirit of God came down to the young people. And they fought everywhere. If you guys remember, some of you still remember, they fought in the sanctuary, on the hallway, in the parking lot, oh my goodness, everywhere. The power of God is so strong. We need to have that. That revival is not, not only for one time, but it has to carry on, generation after generation. Amen? Amen. So, worship is very important. We need to have a true worship. The Bible said God is spirit. Anyone who worships God have to worship with spirit and the truth. That's why we come. I don't know about you, how much you, uh, you, know, you experience and you feel the presence of God today. When we started worship, Jesus, the name, uh, the, beauty, the beautiful name of Jesus, when you started worship, you started to feel inside of your spirit. And it's stirring, you know, because we love Jesus, right? We love Jesus. Yes. Can you imagine, like, uh, okay, I have my grandfather, my great-great-grandfather, which I don't know their name. Pastor Jeff, you, know, you remember, you know their name? Your great-grandparents. Uh, no. <laughs> Maybe somebody, yeah, you know. Those generations come down. We believe that, right? Yeah, we have descended. That's true. That must be true. Yeah, that's why we are now here in this earth. We believe that. But can you imagine 2,000 years ago, Jesus came to this earth and he walked on the earth, on the earth. You believe that? Is that easy to believe, you think? 2,000 years ago, the Son of God, the Savior came to this world. Oh, many people not believe that. Why believe? If you ask me, do you believe? Yes, I believe. From the bottom of my heart, 100%, I believe this Jesus. When we first arrived, the pastor asked him, do you know Jesus? Many people respond, yeah, I know Jesus. Oh, yeah, everybody knows Jesus, yeah. The second question, how about your relationship with Jesus? That's, that second question, knock out. Oh, no, you know, maybe a little bit, maybe I heard, you know. How well can we know Jesus? Only through the relationship, right? We have to have relationship. God love us. As the husband and wife, intimate relationship. He wants us to know very well. 
when you start to know this Jesus. That's why we worship him, we ask him, Lord, I want to know you more, I want to seek this Jesus. I mean, there are st still many, many things that are hidden in the word of God. God wants us to know the Bible, B-I-B-L-E, right? Basic instruction before leaving earth. Many people, you know, they pass, they, 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 they miss that. That's why we need to hear the word of God. Worship him as he deserves our, you know, our everything. He deserves to be worshipped, to be praised. Worship is a lifestyle. You and I, this is our life. Not only jumping or, you know, screaming or crying in the church, in the sanctuary, but what about outside of our life? Every day, you have to live your life, Monday through Saturday and coming again Sunday. Every day in our life, we have to show this Jesus. People look at us and they, they're reading us like a book. You call yourself worshiper. You call yourself Christian, right? How do we live outside? Maybe here we can shout hallelujah, but outside we go to bar or we do such a thing, you know, like the world people, worldly people did. No, worship is a lifestyle. Worship is a relationship with God. We have to have a close relationship. That's why we have his, his word has been given us 2,000 years ago to look at that and then to pray for him. We need Holy Spirit. I am standing here. I am nothing without God, without Holy Spirit. Even to talk about God, to teach about Him without Holy Spirit, what will you teach? What will you speak? Right? It's not an easy thing, but you have to rely on Holy Spirit. God, I need you. Holy Spirit, I need you. Touch my lips, touch my tongue, so that the power of God can manifest through me to talk to God's people. Amen. We need the strength, we need the power from God. Every day in our life, we need this Holy Spirit. Worship is always an act of love. That's why we come. In the first place, who loved us in the first place? God is love, right? He loved us first. He first loved us. That's why we love. We decided to love Him back. We decided to love one another. God repeatedly saying that love one another, love one. This is a commandment. Since the beginning, you heard this commandment. Remember that the beginning, the brother to brother, they kill each other because of jealousy, because of no love. That's why it's keep telling them, love one another, love one another, so that people will see you that you are my disciple. That's worship. Worship is always an act of love. Worship is giving. Giving is worship. We come, we don't come just like that, but we bring the offering, right? We offer our, you know, whatever we have. And not only money, uh, offering, you know, we also offer our body, our spirit and soul. That's why in the book of Romans chapter 12, it said, our worship must be a living sacrifice, living and holy and acceptable. This is the end of the day. We are here in this earth. We are living now is the very last days. Many people are still playing. Many of young people are staying, going outside and you know, like uh, First Peter chapter 4 verse 7 said, be sober. They are not really serious in relationship with God. We need to seek His face every day. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 said, seek what is that? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And he will add that everything that you need later on. Everything. That's how I did in my life. When I finished my high school, pastor, and my, I told my father, I would like to serve God. At that time, you know, not many people are interested in serving in God. Other people, other elders look at my dad and say, why you ask your son serving God? You know, there's other, another things to do. Many, many things that to make his life prosper. You, he can do business. He has many talent. No. I know that, you know, to serve God in our life because this life is very short. You know that. Every people talk about life is short, right? Eternal is forever. But this life compared with the eternal, 
How many people will live in this earth? 75 years or 100 years. But eternity is never end. We need to pre prepare today for eternity. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. The young people, everybody. I mean, the time will come. So, worship is very important. Worship is a living sacrifice. Well, actually, today I'm not talking about worship, just a little bit. You know, I, I bring something, uh, a message to share with you. It's really stirring in my heart. Because when I pray, you know, God showed me this one about the foundation. Our foundation is very important, my brother and sister. It's showing with the two builders. You will see the parable. Uh, Jesus always talking when he's sharing, when he's preaching, he used the parable. The parable is the earthly story, but heavenly message. Amen? It brings heavenly message. The two builders, you know that in Matthew chapter 7, the two builders. The parable similarities. Hold on, just a second here. So, uh, yeah. Jesus told many parables to the people of Israel. These are the story of heavenly life that have a heavenly meaning. The earthly illustrate the spiritual. The earthly story with heavenly message for all of us. Jesus came to this earth and he walked on this earth. He is preaching. Many people follow him. Thousands of people follow him. But not everybody believe. Right? Only a few people believe. He conducted his sermon on the mount. Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 7. Uh, I mean, if you read Matthew, Matthew chapter 5 to Matthew chapter 7, with a parable about two home builders. We begin with the portion before the parable here. Yeah. Let me read Matthew chapter 7. If you have your Bible, Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man and build his house on the sand. So here we see that the two builders, the foundation, I would like to talk about the foundation, how much the foundation is important in our life. God plant us in this earth like a tree, you, your life, my life, and we need to build up our faith, which is the foundation rooted in Jesus Christ. This building before this building takes place, they have to have foundation, right? It takes month after month to lay out the foundation so that it can hold this building firmly, strongly. And now here, the Bible mentioned that the wise man and the foolish man, those who hear the word of God. Everybody will hear the word of God, but not everybody listen, not everybody obey, not everybody live their life. Like what the word said. We came every Sunday, maybe the church people, we sit together, yeah, we sing choirs together, worship together, but our foundation, nobody sees the foundation. It's inside us, right? Its appearance is good, looks, looking good, everybody looking good. But what about your foundation? Think about that. This is very important. So in verse 28 to 29, and so it was when Jesus had ended saying, that people were astonished at his teaching because Jesus taught the people, this crowd, with powerfully, with anointed, and the people were amazed. He was teaching not like other, you know, rabbi or other teach, teacher, but with authority. Therefore, whoever hears this saying of mine, he said, and does them, I will liken him to a wise man. We want to be wise, brothers and sisters, because this time is very critical time, very important, especially why we are living in the last day. The devil is not sleeping. 
He is coming. The devil is coming. Yeah. Look at further here. In verse 25. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. It was built on the rock. The, the time is coming for the storms, big storm, big wave, rain come, flooding come. But this house is standing very strong because it was through that. It was uh, put in the foundation on the rock. The rock means Jesus. Today, we need to build our foundation on Christ, on Jesus. And look at 26 here. But everyone who hears this saying of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. There are two kinds of people we see here. Those who hear Jesus' words and follow and those who hear but don't. They don't. Listen. 27. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell and great was its fall. The, the house that built on the sand, which is the foundation, is very shallow. Many people hear the word of God. Oh, it's okay. I have stayed. I have plenty of time. I stay enjoy in my life. You know, uh, singing is not, not very important. It's okay because God is love, right? People are talking about God is love. He will forgive us. He forgive everybody. Yes. Yes, one side, God is love. God is good. God is patient. What about on the other side? God said, who is not obey his word? They hear the same thing, but the other one is not obey. This person was called the foolish person. The foolish here we see the parable similarity in order. We have two builders, and we have two houses, and we have two storms, yeah? two storms, and two foundations, and two outcomes for the houses, and two types of men. My friend, I tell you, let me tell you, the wind, the storm is coming. We need to prepare. Year 2023, nobody can predict what will happen in the future. I tell you, the storm is coming. If you not build yourself on the, upon the rock of Jesus, it will fall very bad, you know. That is the message. You know, we need to consider our life and examine ourselves. Which foundation am I? On the rock or on the sand? Why we have time today? God give us breathing. God give us, give us life. For the young people, yes, you have plenty of time. Yes, you have your future. Yes, you have your hope. You know, everything that you want to be, you can. But one thing is, don't let pass this one. Don't go and pass this one. You have to build yourself. So which of these six things do you think it is the focus of the parable? The focus. The focus is what? Here we have two houses, they represent our lives. House represents our lives. And our house is where we live, right? Our home. And they are visible, but foundations are not. You look at the house, they are visible, but the foundations are not visible. And what we value is in our house, our family, right? And we want them to last and do. We want them to last for a long time. And we make efforts to maintain them. However, even though the picture of the collapsing house was shocking enough and clearly, the focus of the parable, the differences, is the foundation of each structure, the rock or the sand. So I want to build up my faith on the rock. Jesus is the only hope. You know that Jesus is the only way. Before Jesus lived on the earth, he said, I will send you another comforter. That means the Holy Spirit will come. Imagine when Jesus was walking on this earth, he was preaching, teaching, healing. He showed his power. He's the Son of God. He himself is God, 100%, and man, 100%. He's preaching to the crowd. Not everybody convinced and not everybody believed. But realize that after the Holy Spirit came 
and the power of God pour out to the start from Jerusalem. From that time, the disciples started to preach with powerful, with boldness, and people are changing. Those people are the same crowd when uh, Jesus came to this earth. The same crowd, the same people who are listening to Jesus, but they don't. They could not believe at the time. They could not trust in Jesus. But when the Holy Spirit came and Peter, you know, those disciples are started preaching and people started to change. They, their life started to change. And many people started to believe. 30, uh, 2,000, 5,000, 7,000, and going on until today, you and I, we heard that message. Through the Holy Spirit, power. And we got that. The message of salvation, the message of deliverance, the message of healing, the message of eternal life. You and I are eternal beings. So we will go to eternity, whether in heaven or hell. So it is quite scary if you, if you are not ready, right? We, we better to be ready. So the foundation is very important. The wind will come definitely. The storm will come. So when the storm comes, where will you, where will you be? That's why we keep hearing the word day by day, week by week. The words of Jesus is foundation of our life, our wisdom. House me once like family possession, our future. Storms me trial, challenges, difficulty in life that everyone faces. You have to face your storm. I have to face my storm. So when you face that storm at that time, you will be very discouraged maybe. You will be very tired maybe. But never forget. Run to God. Run to Jesus. He has answer for you. He has you know, so many things, so many good things for you. Spiritual attacks, economic hardship. Domestic issues and church dysfunction. Many, many things will come against us. That's why Apostle Paul said, Jesus told them, my grace is sufficient for you. He already blessed us. His grace is enough for us. Can you imagine, like, in the Old Testament time, the Holy Spirit is not living in the people, inside the people yet. Only the Holy Spirit came upon the prophets and the prophets speak up and that's it. And the Holy Spirit go back. Why? Holy Spirit cannot dwell in the person who have, you know, uh, the, 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 the poisons of death, which is the devil inside the people. After the Adam and Eve fall, you know, every good thing that God put inside them was killed. And the whole world, we became the children of what? Children of devil. But through Jesus Christ, thank God that Jesus came to have the, you know, the, the image of God. And after Jesus rose again from the dead, and he got that power back to him, and that same power is in you and me. He wants to give for all of us. Amen? The storm will come, my friend. So when the storm comes, I was saying, will we, will we be the same or new continuation or devastation? We have to face that. So, the spiritual application is very important. Every time when, when you hear the word of God, not just hearing, but living according to his word. God loves us so much. He wants us to be with him forever, eternity, and give us life forever. In our life, we mess up many things, especially young people. I don't know what you are struggling. Some of you might have a struggling in your life, but the best thing to do is to run to God. Ask God. If you make mistake or if you commit anything, you can always come back to God. Right? He already have... Uh, Open the channel here. Let me read uh, first, first John chapter 1. First John chapter 1, verse 7. Sorry, verse 9. 
If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make Him out to be a liar, and His word is not in us. Everybody make mistake, right? Do you make mistake? I make mistake. Yes, but remember that we can always come back to this Jesus, and we can ask forgiveness today. God is watching us. He wants us to be pure. He wants us to be righteous because the Son Jesus, through Jesus Christ, we can be pure. We can be righteous, and we can come back to Him any time. So, if you need to have a confess your sin, just go ahead. Don't waste time. Don't wait until next week or next month or next year. Somebody, if you need to be baptized, go ahead, baptize. The time is very. You know, uh, very short. Nobody know your time and my time, but as long as we live, you know, we belong to God. We belong to Jesus. First John chapter one verse seven said, "Sorry, verse six. It said, 'If we claim to have fellowship with Him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth.'" But if we walk in the light, as He is the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus His Son purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So, my brother and sister, God is just, and He is always waiting for us. He won't. To bless us so much. There's so many things I can tell you. This 2023, so many good things are also stored for us, and it will come pass in your life. You believe it. You receive it. Amen. It will come pass. How? If we obey. If you really obey. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, let's see here. De Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse one. If you fully obey the Lord your God. And carefully follow all His commands. I give you today the Lord your God, who set you high above all the nations on earth. It can come to pass only when we obey. Only when we fully obey. Many people didn't care that. You know, this is religious. Ah,、oh, many religion is good. You know, Christian religion. Well, if we live. According to religion, and it will be like that. It may never come to pass, because God have already planned for our life, each one of life. God already have in His plan, in His schedule. You will become one day. You know, that's why we count our blessing every day. You know, count your blessing. You will. You may see other people blessed. Oh, look at that! But don't jealous. Your turn will come. Your time will arrive one day. Yes. You will have your future. You will have your college degree. You will have your family. Yeah, you will have business. Those things, everything is God already put in His idea, in His thought. So only, the only thing is we have to fully obey the Lord our God, carefully follow. That means follow His commandment, all His commandment. I thank God in my life. God give me. If I have to testify, almost everything when I ask God, God is wow, so wonderful. That's why the the psalmist said, "The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. I don't need any other thing else because He gave everything already, right?" But there are still something that we have. I mean, we worry in our life, and also His word said, "Do not be worried; do not be anxious, because I will be with you." Jesus is with us every day. He said He promised us He will be with us until the end of the age. Love God, love Jesus, worship Him with truth, worship Him with spirit, and when you encounter with God, when you encounter with Jesus, you see that the 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 only thing people can testify that those who only You know,、uh, experience that. 
and counting. That's why I used to see like many years ago, young people are hunger for the word of God. They have revival. I would like to see among our people. Today, I started to see, Pastor, just the beginning. And we will not be satisfied this. We want to go further. Hallelujah. We want to have more of this Jesus. We want to know more of Jesus. The more you know him and the better your life will go through. Right? I know that you love Jesus. Do not satisfy in this level yet. We still need to go further. We still need to help other people to come to know Jesus. The revival that must be flowing from our life, from this church, from this generation to another generation. Hallelujah.